Once upon a time, not long ago, two brothers were out on the town. After an evening of fun, they got hungry. We have all been there and know exactly what they were feeling. We find ourselves scrambling to find comfort food in a late-night quest to fill our tummies and stop the hunger pangs. Our two brothers found themselves at a corner taqueria. Eight to ten double tortilla tacos later, their hunger pangs were satisfied, but they found themselves experiencing post-taco guilt. They say imagination is the heart of all innovation, and that's exactly how our two brothers came up with the idea to create a low-carb taco tortilla. After years of development, they created Mr. Tortilla, the world's first one-carb, 15-calorie taco tortilla. In this podcaster's opinion, a monument should be built to honor these two brothers for successfully perfecting a delicious taco tortilla. Thanks to them, we can now all enjoy tacos without guilt. Welcome to the Latino Business Report. This podcast covers business, people, and issues of the day from a Latino perspective. The Latino Business Report is brought to you by Tamak, the Texas Association of Mexican-American Chambers of Commerce. Tamak is the leading Hispanic business organization in Texas since 1975. Now for your host, J.R. Gonzalez. They say man cannot live by bread alone. Pero sabes que? That's why we have tortillas. And today's guest is the owner, one of the owners of Mr. Tortilla. Anthony, Anthony, how are you doing? Great. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, saludos a toda mi gente. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Anthony Alcazar, um, and you and your brother, Roland, actually own Mr. Tortilla. Yeah, me and my brother, Ron. goes by Ronald. Um, okay, Ronald. Yep. Perdón. No, you don't know, worry, don't worry. Everyone, let's... everyone, everyone, even, even on the, when you get articles done, some of the, you know, his name is always, uh, uh, always say like, uh, mispronounced. So don't worry about it. He's your little brother. Just let yeah. it slide. Okay. Well, okay. We'll let it slide. <laughs> okay. But Ronald. Okay. Um, so guys, first of all, thank you for being on the podcast. Uh, I've been looking forward to this episode, Mr. Tortilla. And at first I heard Mr. Tortilla. Are you guys serious? I mean, this is like legit. Then I did a little research, and you guys have an amazing company. I mean, tell us a little bit about how you got started or why you even started. How did you get into the tortilla industry? Uh, well, th- thank you so much for, for having me. Uh, I'm blessed to be here. Uh, so, we, you know, kind of coming here by accident. You know, one, one late night, my brother and I decided to go get some tacos. In Los Angeles, every quarter has pop-up taco shops. So. One late night, we got some tacos, and you know, after feeling guilty and bloated, you know, after eating like ten tacos, eight tacos, you get the taco guilt. Like, oh my god, right. I ate so eight, much. Eight or, eight or ten tacos a piece. <laughs> eight or ten tacos a piece, right? <laughs> Double tortilla, right? <laughs> uh, you, you know, normally you start off with four, but then you know, when you re- refill, and then you know, if I do a couple more, come you end up with eight or ten. But got it. Um, you know, I was feeling that taco guilt. You know, I think a lot of people do when they you know go late night and get some tacos. Um, which are delicious, by the way, right? So, you know, an idea came to me. Really, if you really think about it, you know, what makes tacos unhealthy? Because it's not the veggies or the protein. It's, it's the tortillas because they're high in carbs and calories, right? They're delicious, but they're high in carbs and calories. So if we can make a delicious tortilla that was low in carbs and low in calories, that would be a game changer. That's when, like, the idea of Mr. Tortilla was created and it started. All right. Now... Conceptually, I understand what you're saying, but a tortilla, I mean, come on, that's a basic. I mean, that's a staple for, for. I know it's a staple for me. I mean, I have to have my tortillas. I have my tortillas de harina. I got my corn tortillas. I'll get my corn tortillas. I'll make migas. I'll do something, put in carnitas in there. My flour tortillas, I love them. So what you've done is you've gotten, uh, you're attacking a, a, a very, not attacking, you're impeding on something that I cherish a lot is good tortillas. So I have to admit, I wasn't sure. I was a little skeptical, but I ordered some of your tortillas online and tried them, and they're not bad. Anthony, they're actually, they're actually pretty good. They're delicious. They're one net carb, 15 calories, right? Um, and that's you know, a game changer because you can have 20 of my tacos, right, with a one net carb tortilla, or you can have just one regular Taco with uh, you know double, double corn tortilla. Wow! And that's so the amount of carbs like 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 a twenty to one ratio. Like a twenty to one ratio, but not only that, that uh, our tortillas are high in fiber, uh, no sugar, no cholesterol, 
and uh, are healthier. So essentially diabetics can enjoy them. Anyone on a low carb, a low calorie diet, uh, and you get full faster because of the protein. Oh, man. I mean, actually, a corn tortilla, I mean, has, it has better, more nutrition than a, a slice of white bread. I mean, obviously. So these tortillas that you're making are even better than a corn tortilla. I mean, look, I, I would never say better than a corn tortilla because people love, I love corn tortillas, right? But it's an alternative to uh, wanting to eat healthy. If you think about it, really, what we're doing is we're making tacos healthier for everyone and and, uh, and different dishes healthier for everyone, right? Yeah. Because if you're on a diet, you still want your chilaquiles, your tacos, your burritos, your quesadillas, your enchiladas. And to not be able to have them, I feel, is very difficult, right? And nothing on the market is, is good, right, really. Um, and so uh, our tortillas are, are delicious, and that's why we have that money back 100% guarantee. If you don't like our tortillas, you know, I want but, you still to love the Mr. Tortilla brand. Wait and a minute, so wait a minute, wait a, wait, wait a minute. You have a money back guarantee? Oh, money back guarantee, 100%. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't see that. So if I send you back the empty package, can I get my money back? <laughs> Not on the empty package, but uh, <laughs> definitely if you're not happy with our, with our product, We'll definitely refund you, and, and we want to make sure we want to make sure that you're wow. Happy so that, that's that's how much you believe in your product with money back guarantee. Absolutely, uh, not only the product but the brand, right? I, I want you know even when people say you know what I, I didn't, it's very few. I would say thank God you know over ninety nine percent of the people love our product, but there are a few people that uh, don't like it or they don't uh, you know they're so used to the corn tortilla, it's mm -hmm. hard for them. And those are the people we say look money back guarantee uh, because we want them to still love the brand. Right, so this brand just stands behind what they do, and it might not be that product, but we have tuna crab tortillas, we have keto chips now, we have uh, keto crunchy chips, three net yes, carbs, nothing like I, it on the planet. I, I uh, tried some of those. Sauces. I tried some of those keto chips. It, I have to look when I look when I get your your products. I have to not read the label of how healthy it is. Okay, if if I do that, then I'll get the psychological stuff that I may not like it. But I tried your your chips. I've tried your tortillas, and I. I enjoyed them. I, I really have to admit, I enjoyed them. Now, I have not had a chance to try your low-carb pancake mix, your low-carb brownie mix, or your low-carb uh, uh, chocolate chip cookies. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to that, but when I do it, I'm going to tell myself, okay, JR, it's, it's a regular cookie. Try not to think about it. But, but I've been really impressed with what, what you, the product that you've done, the quality, the taste, and, you know, it's new to me, but my brother, my, my younger brother, is your younger brother who uh, I'm, I'm sorry couldn't make the uh, the podcast, but you told me he's on the factory floor right now trying to yeah, trying to keep things going. He, 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 so not only does he help with the digital marketing and all the e-commerce the, the e side, but he also uh, is the uh, operations guy. So that whenever there's um, installations or new machinery or anything, he's the guy that has to be there. And so um, it was the last second thing as, as – no, I fully understand. I'm just, I'm just happy to be able to get you on, be on this because we've been trying to schedule this for a little while. But my little brother, uh, he's been actually eating your products for years now. Oh, that's awesome! Uh, whenever we hear that people have known of the brand and, and uh, like it just it feels special. And I, do you mind? Can I tell you how the Mr. Tortilla name came about? Uh, you know, I was going about to ask that in a minute because it's. I mean, it definitely describes what it is. You know, a tortilla. But Mr. Tortilla just kind of struck me as. An unusual branding, but you know it works. How, how did you come up with the name? Thank you. So um, we wanted to have a tortilla company, right? I told you we, you know, had an idea, uh, but then we had a placeholder name, you know, LA Tortilla, right? Los Angeles mm -hmm. Tortilla. And so um, I remember my brother, my mother, my father went out to Santa Barbara one weekend, and um, they, uh, at that time they had the company car, the company card, the LA Tortilla, right? Uh, and so when they were checking into the hotel. It was, um, there's a wait. So everyone kind of left their card and they would get called. And so I guess um, when they called uh, my my dad, they were like, uh, Mr. Tortilla, Mr. Tortilla, right? And then he goes, oh, I guess that's me, right? So when they tell me the story, I'm like, yo, that's, hold on a second. That's the name right there. Can you please look it up? Is it is it taken? And it was available. And, and uh, we felt that God sent us that name. Um, because everyone can't believe that. Hey, how did you guys get that name? You know, Mr. Tortilla. Right, and uh, I was just, you know, blessed that it was available. Well, it's kind of like this podcast, the Latino Business Report. I mean, I just came up with it and said, "I'm surely somebody has this this name already." And now, nah, there you go, it was available. So we, we jumped all over it. So Mr. Tortilla was kind of a mistake. Somebody was was calling you or paging you and didn't get the the LA Tortilla thing down. Paging my dad, yeah, paging your dad to, to check in. And um, when they told me the story, I just knew that was that you know that name felt right. 
So, and this is a family business. It's you and your brother, and you mentioned your dad. Does your dad work in the industry as well? So, uh, me and my brother started the company, but when we did, we needed someone to guide us, someone that was uh, familiar with the food manufacturing part of the business. And so we thought, oh, who else is my father? So we asked him to come uh, come on board and, and help us and guide us. So, um, he, you know, he's been amazing. He's helped us out a lot, and he's taught us a lot about manufacturing, food manufacturing. And um, it's not easy, the food manufacturing parts, uh, you know. I, you know, at first we, we, we didn't want to really have to be involved in the food manufacturing part of it. We thought we could use co-packers, but this industry is very competitive. And so um, it, we ended up having to uh, start our own factory and, and uh, having the manufacturing side background uh, taught to us was, was huge. Okay. So you and your brother, or, or what did you do before you started the company? And what did your brother do? Well, my brother was graduating from college. That's when I approached him to, you know, you just start oh, wow. a company, right? So he, so you, you guys were young when you started this thing. Oh, yeah. It was over 10 years ago. I mean, uh, I was in my 20s. I forgot what that felt like. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> it, you know, it, we, we well, started young. You were you're both in your 20s, right? Yes, yes. I was both in our 20s. I've always been, you know, um, uh, marketing and business consulting. Uh, and, uh, it, it, you know, when we started Mr. Tortilla, though, it was we had to learn this industry, and, and it's, it's been t- it's been ten long years. We've been through a lot. So when people now see the success of being number one on Amazon, U.S., Canada, the U.K., growing exponentially, three thousand percent in twenty twenty one, that's I mean we're blessed and thankful to God uh, for it. But there's like ten years, you know, prior that was you know uh, it was yeah. very difficult. A lot of like dark times, a lot of a. Uh, um, struggles right to get here well Anthony, let me ask you this i mean when they said you know number one seller on amazon i go what's what i mean what the ass do they sell on amazon i looked it up and there's quite a few so very impressive that you're number one but why weren't you why aren't you in like grocery stores and in, in in different places i mean isn't that the d- traditional way to, to sell your products yeah absolutely that's what i thought too so when we started my brother and i we were so naive because we thought like you know like many small businesses right you know, what do you think of, okay, look, if I make a good product and people like it, I get into the supermarkets and people buy it and, you know, sure, that's it. Makes sense. Oh, but we didn't know that, especially like, in many industries, especially in our industry, that um, the giants exist and the giants don't want you on the shelves. They pay for the shelf space. So they don't want competition and it's very difficult to get in. I mean, we could not get on the shelves. It took years and years and years to get on shelves. And when you finally do, you get in at the bottom. And as a new brand, how can you compete that way, right? So it's just not a fair competition, and, and that's why we're, we're you know we're not in supermarkets, and, and we we uh, we're not. But now we're going into supermarkets, which is beautiful because thanks to the success on e-commerce and becoming you know the number one brand on Amazon, tortilla brand on Amazon, we've had a lot of interest of uh, different uh, supermarkets. And honestly, when you told me you guys are out of Texas, I was so excited to come in and do this podcast because Texas has been amazing to us. It's one of the top three states that orders our products, and, and uh, we would love to be in HEB and, and all over uh, Texas to, to have our product uh, consumed. Dan, yeah, we'll definitely talk about that after the after the podcast. But as you're looking at, so what? I, I, so difficult getting on shelves, and <clears throat> in one of our our pre podcast uh, conversations, you were telling me that even in the pandemic. When the shelves were empty, you could not even get your products on the shelves. Then, yeah. So I, you know, I'll touch. I'll touch that uh, right now, Jr. So when you know we couldn't get on the shelves for all these years, right? You said, okay, we got to pivot because we're going to go out of business this way, right? So we're in supermarkets and no one has seen us. We're at the bottom. Uh, it's not working for us. So let's get a major account. Mm-hmm. So we switch over to get you know a military account. It takes years and years of visiting bases. I just want you to imagine this, right? Yeah, small company. You're not making any money, right? Me and my brother didn't pay ourselves for eight years. Oh my right? gosh! Yeah, what did you do um, live live off tortillas and just kind of... <laughs> live off live off tortillas <laughs> and, 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 and you know and, and our significant others, right? Our wives and and, and so uh, you know you're just you know using our own you know our own savings to you know go across you know visiting army base for years, right? Right. Finally getting an approval. Finally getting this account to a distributor. Right after the unsuccessful uh, intent to get into the stores, so now we now we finally got a military account through a distributor, and now you know we're finally growing. We can finally pay the bills. 
finally little, seeing a little growth. Oh my, you know, things are going. Okay. Get breathing room, breathing room, right, to growth. Breathing room, right? And guess what happens? Well, it turns out that those same big guys don't like competition, right? And they pay the distributor millions of dollars in rebates every year. And so they don't like when you guys come, they don't like when you guys are growing. So from one day to the next, boom, the count was, you know, taken away. And so now again, we have to pivot. All those years, oh, we're about to go out of business again. What do we do? Let's pivot. Now let's sell to restaurants. So now we're selling to restaurants, right? Okay. The pandemic hits, picture that. Every All the restaurants are going out of business. You know, we're about to go out of business. And, you know, I think to myself, well, there are empty shelves on the supermarket right now. There's even empty, right? We have tortillas. Even during the pandemic, when there were empty shelves, they would not allow us to put our product in the supermarkets. That's how competitive wow. it is. Okay, so You had product, you had food, shelves were empty, and you still couldn't get in. Yes, yes. Wow. And so guess what happens? Well, we're about to go out of business. I'm like, I tell my brother, I don't know, I, you know just, what are we going to do? And he goes, you know, Anthony, we should sell tortillas on the internet. Let's go to Amazon. Because on Amazon, the consumer chooses who's number one. On Amazon, you know, I buy on Amazon. And this is Ronald I, telling you this. This, 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 this is Ronald, Ron. And I, I look at him, and I, you know, dead in the face, and I'm like, we get serious? Come on, man. Tortillas on the internet? We would have to create a new business model that's not existent. We're selling tortillas on the internet. Learn social media and digital marketing on the fly. And pray. And that's exactly what we did, right? And, uh, you know, he, he was right. Amazon is amazing. Uh, at, you know, on Amazon, the consumer chooses who's number one. And it's the only, I, I believe, it's the only fair place that you can compete as a small business, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I'm, I'm telling you, so how else can I compete? I'm, t I'm, uh, you know, I'm living proof. The American dream, like competing, how could you on the shelf? It's only, it's only possible through Amazon, right? And uh, we grew 3,000%, right, in 2021, uh, number whoa, one. Whoa, 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 whoa. You grew how much? 3,000% in 2021. In 2021, your company grew 3,000%. Yes. And so a can lot you of, imagine? My uh, gosh. So can, so ramping you, up for that. Yeah, and, and this, is the, this is the interesting part. We grew without capital, right, without access to capital, right? Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> And it was very, very, very difficult, right? But we did it, you know? And so um, going into that, right, um, just, you know, blessed, thankful to God for, for giving us the tools to be able to compete and finally get our brand out there. So we have a philosophy, Jared. So I, you know, we feel whatever God has for us in the Mr. Tortilla brand, it's, it's for us, right? Mm -hmm. And whatever God has for other companies, other Tortilla companies, it's for them. We're not trying to compete with them. I, I, you know, I don't look at what they're doing. We're in our own lane. And all we're trying to do is provide a healthier product that's delicious, right, and grow our, our consumer base. And so, uh, but thanks to the success of the internet, thanks to the success of Amazon, and Amazon, you know, honestly, they've we've worked with other uh, big box retailers, but nobody has done what Amazon has done for us. They like helping small businesses. I mean. Thanks to them, we could export to Canada. We're number one in Canada. Thanks to them, we're number one in the UK. Thanks to them, we're selling in Germany as of last week, and, and things wow. are picking up. Australia, United Arab Emirates. I mean, it's just you know growing, growing. Are they, are, uh, are they putting are, are they putting Wiener Schnitzel in your tortillas? You know, I, I don't the know sauerkraut or what? Yes, but the thing is, you know, I, I feel that uh, Mexican food is just growing in general, right? I mean, it the is, industry it grows. Is. You know, it's, it's a very lucrative industry. It's a billion dollar industry. Uh, and I think that's why it's so, you know, uh, uh, I would say monopolized, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, it's growing all over the world, and, and, and people just want a healthier option, and that's where we come in, into play. Well, let me ask you this, Anthony. You, you, you brought up a point. For years and years, you were working. You were going without a pay. You guys were going without paychecks for eight years. I mean, that's a long time. I'm sure there was uh, times with your spouses and just quit, find a job, do something else this isn't working i mean what kept you going that's a long time to be dedicated to an idea that you weren't sure that was going to work and with not having access to capital and you know look for all minorities especially latino owned businesses access to capital is a huge deterrent from from growth but we'll 
that's for another episode. But yeah, what kept you going? What kept you going? I didn't, re- I, you know, before I would have argued with you, right? I was, I don't think so. But having lived it, a company my size now that's growing and, and that's profitable, I still have problems getting a fair valuation from venture capitalists. I still have a fair time accessing fair capital, right? Wow. And it's just incredible. Yeah. Uh, but going back to your to, to what you were you're asking. You know, thank God for our spouses that gave us strength and, and, and uh, during those tough times. There were multiple times that we wanted to give up. There were multiple times that we were, that we were, we were going to go out of business. and But the faith kept us strong and, and uh, the faith that God put a dream in our heart. God, you know, told me, hey, you know, he made me feel, you know what? Mr. Tortilla is going to be big. You're going to be known. And, and that's what the dream, even though we can see it and it looked impossible, which, you know, it kind of is if you think about it. It's a miracle that we're here, and that's why they are very thankful to God. And, and when I say pray, like you know, when we went into e-commerce, we prayed. I mean, we did did our homework, learned did digital marketing on the fly, you know, e- uh, uh, social media. But really, it was it was the prayer that, that you know, like please help us. And that put put, was- put a lot into your faith there. It's part of the business model. It sounds like. <laughs> yep, yep. I mean, ten percent of our net profits are, are, are you know are, are allocated mm-hmm. to charities. 10% uh, profit sharing for the employees. We hire adults with special needs. And, uh, you know, it's definitely in our, in our DNA, right? And But that's during, during all those tough times that we wanted to give up. We weren't sure, uh, you know, <laughs> what would happen. Just not giving up, it, it's, it was so crucial, right? And to everyone out there struggling, you know, I just said, just don't give up. Just because that's that's where the end happens when you give up. You just because this keep became fighting, a- keep fighting, keep, you know. And me and my brother would pick. You know, sometimes it was him, sometimes it was me. But then it, at the end of the day, my father is the one who instilled that uh, in us growing up. I mean, he would make us listen to Winston Churchill's speech: "Never give up." Right? Keep mm-hmm. going. So because of that, you know, we just never gave up and kept going, kept going, hoping for a miracle, hoping for a miracle. I mean, I mean, there, you know. It, and a miracle came, right? And, and now we're growing and we're, we're in this uh, space that now all the retailers that we couldn't get into before because of the success that we're having and because the way our product moves and sells and, they, you know, they want our product, right? And so it's just... Now, now they want now they want you, huh? Yeah, now, now they're, you know, they're, 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 now they want, they want our product. But, you know, there's nothing I would love more than to get into all the supermarkets we could. I mean, I would love to be in HEV. You know, why? Because... We've gotten so many emails from people in Texas. Say, hey, you know, I can't. It, I, I don't want to pay for shipping. Right? Why do you guys? Right. Why aren't you guys on the supermarkets? Why don't you guys? And, and you know, I mean, we tell them like, we would love. There's nothing much. There's nothing we would love more than to be on the supermarkets for all you guys. But this is our story. And this is why we're not. And this is why we had to go to e-commerce, right? And so, um, yeah, if we, we, you know, God willing, in, in the near future. All right, so as you're looking at it, you have um, about 80 employees right now? Yeah, about 80 employees. Okay. We're going to pause here just for a second. A train is going by. No worries. We'll edit this out. Hang on. Do you hear it on your end or not? Yeah, yeah, I'm good on my end. Do you, do you hear the train on your end? No, 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 I don't. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I think you said 80 employees. All right, you have 80 employees, and I think that's great. You do profit sharing with your employees. You give 10% of your of your profits to 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 charities, nonprofit organizations. I mean, that's very um, very kind of you. You don't have to do that. I mean, you're you're a private sector business. You're you've worked hard for the money, but yet you share it, which I think is is great that you do that. So, in the growth of Mr. Tortilla, you want to get into retail stores you want to get into grocery stores what what is near future i mean what does it look like in your in your strategy or your plan for growth because i mean you can you can keep growing on the internet and you're doing a great job there but where else do you want to be oh we want to be all over the place i mean we have these chips they're just so delicious so amazing i mean the three net carbs and i believe they should be in every sandwich shop every you know uh uh you know uh supermarket uh, liquor store you know corner market um, we, we're just really expanding right now. We're, we're just right currently right now, our only limitation to really more growth is capital, right? Because okay. we can't sustain this growth without, without, without the capital, new machinery, um, more than improving the, the output. And, uh, just, it's just so necessary for growth. It's just, uh, 
you know, to get to this level, it's been miraculous, right? But now, you know, moving forward, I just, you know, we, we, we just need, you know, the, the, uh, the capital plus. We want to grow our team, bring in more people. My brother and I are tired of working 120 hours a week. <laughs> That's very selfish of you. Why not? Do it, man. Do it. No. <laughs> I know what you mean. That's a, that's a lot. Uh, I mean, putting in the type of hours that you have to, and you've been doing sustaining that level for I'm sure years now. You kind of need a break. You need to get some other people in there. But at the same time, Anthony, let me ask you this: Do you trust other people to be on that to be on that production floor? Uh, if, you know what? We think we have an amazing team. Uh, we have an amazing team, and, and uh, you know, just finding you know great people to keep joining our team and keep this growth right um we have great uh, team chemistry here you know here uh, you know at this company everyone is you know and, and that's important for us that to, to have a place where people want to go to work where people are happy people treat each other with respect um and good work environment because i don't want i, I would hate to have a place you know, I, i've had in the past i've had a job that i dreaded to go to work i hated mm -hmm. to go to work because of the people because of the environment and that's the last thing I, you know, I wanted here, especially at Mr. Tortilla. I want something where people love to come to work, right? And, and uh, we've done a great job uh, doing that and, you know, with, with growth. And we can hire another 120, 240 people uh, with the right capital, right? Relatively fast just because of the growth and, and, and how much we're growing. Do you have a hard time keeping up with the demand right now? Yeah, yeah, I have a hard time keeping up with the demand right now. Uh, but where you know we've we've made the necessary adjustments to keep them with the demand right and and uh right now but all in all without the capital it's just you know okay difficult. i have to buy boxes bags and larger inventory more raw materials right uh can't keep inventory and right? within, so, with the, with the get, prices right now and inflation i imagine you're feeling it as well yeah we're actually interestingly enough we got a bunch of emails right from our customers we love your product I, you know, I'm diabetic and I, I can only eat your tortillas, right? Uh, because the, the rest of them, I just want to have Mexican food without them. Uh, other people, I just had the VSG surgery. I love them. But your prices are high. What can you do because your prices are high? We're the only company, Jerry, I believe, that have lowered our prices right now during, during you know, this inflation price. And I told everyone, hey, you know what? We're just going to lower the prices and, okay. you know, it, it is, you know, <clears throat> It is what it is. Uh, the people on our uh, on our email marketing list, um, uh, we give them the best deals, the best discounts. So, they can so, the so how much did you lower your prices by percentage wise? I would say good twenty plus percent. Wow. Now, by doing that, it definitely affects your operation. That it affects your cash flow. That affects your 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 bottom line, your profit margins. I mean, why did you do that? Well, you know what? I, I got to tell you, we'll, we'll make it up with volume, Jr. Right? We'll make it up with vo more volume. Um, uh, and we're, we're profitable, we're making money, but, uh, you know, it's so, okay. you know, we, I mean, we don't have to make that much, you know, uh, how can I, I, I talked to my brother and I was like, Hey, listen, at, at the end of the day, I mean, people want our product. I mean, it, you know what, if right now there's inflation, people are hurting, we have, we have to lower our price. So you dropped your prices. So I dropped my prices, even though I can keep up with the volume as it was right, right. at the high price. And now you got to produce even more product to make up for that financial well, that, loss, you, that hit that you're taking for a lower price. Wow. Yeah. That well, okay. I mean, if it works, I mean, I don't know many companies that actually would go in and hey, we're gonna. We know you're suffering. We know you're tight with money right now, so we're gonna lower our prices. Wow. That is uh, that's a lot to be said for for you and your brother to do that. Now, when you de develop the tortilla. Uh, did you bring on a nutritionist or, I mean, how did you come up with coming up with these healthy, healthy products that taste so good? Well, my, my uncle is a, is a, is a um, world renowned food scientist. And my brother was his apprentice for many years growing up. And I would always tell him, I don't know why you're learning about this stuff. You're never going to use it. <laughs> Turns out the yes, right? And, uh, but besides <clears throat> from that, we, we um, hired uh, the best uh, team possible to help us with that, uh, put that together. And uh, there's a lot of trial and error, a lot, right? But mm -hmm. uh, after many, many years, we're finally able to, to develop the perfect uh, tortilla. Because it has to be delicious. It doesn't matter. What, it, the, the macros don't matter if it's not delicious. Right. right. That's the number one thing. All of our products are delicious. 
Um, well, I've, I've, I've tried your products right now in, in Migas. I've also uh, experimented with my air fryer and made some, some uh, you know, chalupas, you know, put some, some nice. uh, frijoles and queso and put them on there and put them in the air fryer until they got nice and toasty. Uh, like I said, I'm impressed with the product. I, to be honest with you, Anthony, I didn't think I was going to like it. I said, okay, let me try it. I have to try the product before the podcast, but uh, I, I was surprised. I mean, it's really a good product. In fact, I, I had one last night. I was going for a snack, and there's a little piece of uh, of um, fried chicken in there. And I said, well, the fried chicken's probably not healthy, but if I get one of these healthy tortillas, and there you go. <laughs> there you go. I didn't feel as guilty. Yeah, it's one step at a time, man. I was going to tell you, um, you know, people say that's cliche, but it's made with a lot of love. I mean, we, we, we love to make tortillas, we love to have people eat our tortillas, right? And um, we're so passionate, about, you know, about about making tortillas. So most companies, they have the head of whoever runs their tortilla making machine line, right? Mm-hmm. Their, uh, you know, specialty is, you know, volume getting it out. We don't have that. We have a master baker, that his job sure. is to make sure that those tortillas are coming out with quality and makes they're perfect. And, you know, his, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, 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 parents, his parents made tortillas, his great grandparents made tortillas, his grandparents made tortillas. I mean, you know, we have someone yeah. who really loves to make tortillas. That's the head, uh, you know, one making these, these, these products. Well, I can see the health benefits of having these tortillas, especially in the Latino community. I mean, Latinos, Mexicanos, whatever. We love our tortillas, but we suffer from diabetes. We suffer from high blood pressure. We have, you know, cardiovascular um, issues. So a healthier tortilla does make sense. So you're actually killing two birds with one stone here and and also helping the population. If more people can start switching to those tortillas, I mean, a 20 to 1 ratio? I mean, <laughs> you have to eat 20-year tortillas to get the same type of, uh, what would you say, for, uh, for flour the tortilla, carbs. the carbs? Man, yeah. that's that's amazing. So when you're looking at the health aspect, I mean, have you looked at hospitals or, or hospitals or other nutrition places or yes, senior yes. citizen homes? Are, are they interested in this product? Yes, absolutely. I mean, we have we, we get uh, emails every day from people who are in phone calls that you know want to distribute our product, want to bring them everywhere. But really, I mean, it's just you know being able to uh, keep up with the demand, right? And for that, it goes back to the one underlying uh, problem, which is capital, right? Um, mm-hmm. And then you deal with the other problems, whereas the access to capital for minority and Latino companies is very, I didn't believe it until, you know, I'm dealing with it like today, right? Welcome. (laughs) Welcome to minority business in the United States. It is tough. Um, I I have to, I I cannot help, uh, Anthony, but go back to those difficult times. I mean, I can, I can say it's a lot of stress on, you have kids? Yes, yes. I mean, that's a lot of pressure, you know, on a marriage, on kids, of working all these crazy hours, you know, not bringing home a paycheck, and chasing a dream, a dream that, you know, could have never happened. It looks so far, it looks so dark, but then, you know, that, that's what the you know, key about faith is, right? It's, it's, if you can see it, that's not really faith, because you can see it. Yeah. Faith is believing something is going to happen. Not knowing when, whether... When no one can see it, when it looks impossible, right? It wasn't, you know, it, 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 just think about... Just from the outside, if I were to tell you, you know what? During the pandemic, when the world is going crazy, right? Mm -hmm. When, you know, I'm going to take a tortilla and I'm going to sell it on the internet. It's never been done before to that scale, right? (laughs) And people are going to buy, are you going to choose to buy tortillas from the internet, uh, you know, over like the stores and everything? My first reaction would be, it's that's local, man. Yeah, crazy, that's what right? I told my brother. That's what I told my brother. I was like, I looked at him and, and uh, you know, I wish I could take the credit for like, hey, it was my idea. And, you know, <laughs> no, but, it, you know, it was him. He, he, you know, he's an avid Amazon shopper, right? And he just knew, you know, mm-hmm. I had to have this feeling that, you know, once we put our tortillas, you know, on Amazon, on the internet, it's just going to explode. And, and, and it did. And reviews started coming in. And, you know, um, it's just been... It's just been amazing. Well, I'm sure during those tough times, you had your share of uh, of uh, a bologna inside one of your one of your tortillas, and that was dinner, you know. Uh-huh. Um, sometimes it was just tortillas. <laughs> <laughs> the bologna was too expensive. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, like and that's what many small businesses um, have to. That's why I don't believe in this in this business bullying, right? I think yeah. something, you know, um, 
I, that's why I feel like e-commerce is so important because it gives small businesses that chance to that, that know, level to playing that. field. That level that playing even, field. Yes, it, it was a yeah. It, it equals the, uh, the playing field because um, you know what we did is we built a brand, right? And the way we were able to build a brand was social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, uh, you know, Snapchat, creating. Uh, funny videos, creating content that our consumers would like, and just you know, with a, with an iPhone. So essentially, David had his slingshot against Goliath. We had our uh, you know iPhone and, and computer, right? And, and that was how that we was your able to that was your slingshot. Content, you know, I mean, if you think about it, we took the internet space from our billion dollar competitors, right? Like, like we we're, we're the number one online tortilla seller, uh, it, it, you know, it, it, not just in the world, US, right? In the world. And so and that's just because, and we can really keep growing. We just need the, the capital. And you know, the beautiful part is that we don't just make healthy, you know, local one connect carb tortillas. We make an amazing flour tortilla. I make an amazing corn tortilla. I, but if you think about it, if I couldn't get my healthy product on the shelves, do you think I was going to get my flour or corn tortillas on the shelves? No way. Yeah. And so, um, I, you know, I, I do believe that, um, you know, one important phrase I want to share with everyone listening is, uh, uh, an Asian friend told me this saying, right? He said, a Chinese friend said, silent mouths don't get fed. And that just resonated with me. Silent mouths don't get fed. So, you know, during this time, you know, we've been screaming to the world, hey, help me, help me. I want some my tortillas. Like, give me a chance. Like, and no one would, li- but someone was listening out there. You know, someone was listening. And, and you know, I feel for anyone that's going through, uh, a similar situation or, or, or why you just can't stay silent. You always have to, you know, you know, scream and yell and, and say promote, something. let people know, but at the same time, don't give up, don't, yeah, give, don't up. give up and don't give up. And, you know, you know, uh, and, and when Amazon heard our story and, 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 and uh, saw what we we're going through, man, they went above and beyond for us. Well, they, you are they, definitely an Amazon. They, they, you know, they did, um, you know, they, they featured us for Hispanic heritage month yeah. They, um, you know, they just uh, honestly, like, I, I just couldn't believe that we worked with all these other, or we were trying to work with all these retailers for all these years, right? And no one wanted to work with us or help us or whatnot. But as soon as, like, uh, you know, we were on Amazon, they were just going above and beyond for us. And we were just, just so thankful you know, to God for sending them to us. That's great. So you're definitely an Amazon success story. I mean, definitely an Amazon success story. That definitely. And, and you know, people say all the time, you know what? Well, Amazon don't they sell like tortillas? Don't they? They do. They do their own thing. But Amazon gives you the tools to build a brand, right? Because once you build a brand, you know, I'm, I'm not worried if Amazon comes out with you know their own like low carb tortillas or that, because it's just mm-hmm. we've built a brand. We've you know, our customers love the Mr. Tortilla brand, and, and we love our customers, and and that's what the special, uh, you know, that's that's what some, that's just something special. For well, us. Mr. Tortilla is definitely something that's brandable. At least, it, I mean, L.A. tortillas. People would have called you La Tortilla. I know, <laughs> La Tortilla. No, it's not La. It's L.A. Okay, so from L.A. tortillas to Mr. Tortilla, great brand. You guys have done an amazing job. Anthony, we're almost out of time here. Do you, do you have any any closing comments or thoughts you want to leave with the audience? And you know what, I would I would really love to. Maybe um, we can do another podcast down the road to talk about how you entered that e commerce space, oh. and maybe give some tips for some of uh, the audience out there of how to how to build their own company or how how to build their own brand using um, the internet, using some of the different social media platforms, and just how to get to get in there. Absolutely, all you need is an iPhone. Right and access to social media and internet. Right and you know, I'll, I'll share everything I learned. You know, and a little, a little that. creativity and a good product too. Out of yeah, imagine. yeah. During, during the process, yeah, I would love to share that for everyone because you know what? I wish someone would have told me earlier. I wish someone would have told me, you know, maybe three, four years, five years ago. Right? Mm-hmm. Would have started sooner. And and honestly, I mean, it's just, it's just, it, it's just been uh, a blessing. And so, uh, I mean, e-commerce for all the small businesses out there struggling, trying to get their products in the hands of consumers they have to go to e-commerce and yeah i would love to come back thank you so much for for having me today and for inviting me to uh, another session no, in the and thank you for offering and i'm going to hold you to that i'm going to hold you to that we'll do another podcast and we'll roll up our sleeves and um, get into the whole e-commerce and social media and how you made it successful and built the brand of mr tortilla awesome Done? thank you so much okay. and just one, one thing i did my brother i mean 
he's the he's the he's the the, the digital genius. Yeah, I make sure I, I give him his uh, his accolades because you know, he, he, you know I couldn't have done it without him. And Ron, sorry you couldn't make it. Sorry for calling you Roland. It's Ron, it, it's yeah. Ron. yeah. And first and foremost, God, right? Because without you know God, nothing would be possible. Well, thank you. thank you very much for joining us. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to the Latino Business Report. We're here with Anthony uh, Acalazar. He's uh, one of the owners of Mr. Tortilla. And if you like what you heard, please go ahead and uh, give us a like. You can also follow us on wherever you listen to podcasts. And also visit our website, uh, latinobusinessreport.com. We have a lot of information on what's coming up and some upcoming episodes of what's happening. And a reminder, during Hispanic Heritage Month, we're going to start dropping episodes twice a week. So we're going to be very, very busy. So, Anthony, maybe we, towards the end of Hispanic Heritage Month and right after, we can roll up our sleeves and get into your podcast. And what I'm going to do for you, sir, is on the, on the episode notes, I'm going to give a link to your website so people can see all your wonderful products and go ahead and order online. Let's just see if they're not... If you can't get them in the stores where you're at, order them online. The shipping is not that bad. And if you're Amazon Prime, sabes que? You don't pay for the, you don't pay for the shipping. You get it for free. Exactly. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. And guys, till next time, uh, Jared Gonzalez once again with the Latino Business Report.